Good morning everyone. Hi, hello. My name is EJ and I am back again with another art process video for me to dissect, inspect and kind of look at retrospectively and talk about and whatnot. Uh, so yeah, I do this in the hopes that maybe you, the audience, can learn a thing or two from from the video. Um, so yeah, it, this is this video is particularly special because uh, every December 28th, I do two extra video posts uh, just to commemorate the first time I ever posted on YouTube. Um, I joined YouTube sometime in 2013, but it was on December 20th, 2018, if I'm not wrong, when I actually posted my first video. And so you... Yeah, it's sort of an anniversary of sorts, so yeah, that's why I post two videos um, on December 28th, uh, aside from my first of the month and 15th of the month post, so yeah, yay, <laughs> extra hard time last videos, and not only that, um, this video is very exciting simply because of the fact that it is very, very close to Christmas, so uh, before I forget and blank out and not think about the fact that it's five days away i would just very much like to say merry merry christmas and happy holidays to you all so yeah i uh, hope you guys are having a blessed time during this very very hectic and busy season so yeah um but now that all of that um early video announcements is done i guess we can talk about what is going on in the video right now uh so yeah i would very much like to talk about what's going on in the video right now before i talk about the artwork um simply because this part of the video is only going to go on for a few minutes so what we are taking a look at again is me working on blender i have started the process of not started the process i've been doing the process of doing a 3d mock-up of all my illustration simply because it helps me troubleshoot perspective and lighting issues right off the bat it's such a great way to start out your illustrations um in my case i only spent really just an hour just doing some form of 3d mock-up i don't spend any more time than that because 3d can get very very time intensive and you can get suckered in into doing all those crazy things that you don't ever really need to do case in point uh is this particular video right here i do believe i only spent an hour doing 3d but i think i might have spent a lot longer I i'm not sure but one thing for sure though is that i didn't really need to go through the process of using archimesh slash archi pack plugins they're very great plugins on blender they're free it comes standard with blender and the archimesh and archipack um plugins helps you create um furniture and simple um what's the word i'm looking for uh architecture uh items <laughs> simple architecture items that are standard in every architecture uh pre-visualization uh i i guess the archimesh and archipack plugins helps you create windows and doors um which comes standard obviously <laughs> in every architecture project you need to have windows and doors and then one of those plugins also does furniture such as the case of what i just did with the drawer um i think i use the archimesh yeah and they have the options of creating cabinets and whatnot so it's a really cool plugin because it does speed up your modeling process i didn't have to model um everything out which is nice uh it only took me like a few minutes to obviously get them started but what i was trying to say was that i didn't even really need to go through all the full detail of adding all the furniture such as the case with the cabinet because in the end you will see that i eventually ended up doing something else like i didn't even really employ that cabinet um in my illustration but it's still kind of cool though you know i mean i'm kind of just messing around with blender to just kind of prototype my scene i didn't really have anything in mind yet i, I know i have a perspective slash 
point of view that I had in mind slash composition that I had in mind based on a sketch that I did. Um, and I very much wanted to retain that particular composition. Um, but aside from that, I, you know, everything else that was going to be contained in that scene was kind of, you know, just freeform. Like I didn't have anything set in mind. So I was just totally messing around and just having fun. So, um, it was really cool that those two plugins existed on Blender. So yeah, but anyway, so using those plugins, I created my basic scene. I created the bed, which does not come with Archimesh slash Archipack plugin. Um, there's no bed creator of some sort with those two plugins. I basically had to model those off the top of my head. And obviously you can see that my modeling was just very, very basic shapes, very, very simple. This is what I typically do. I just do simple blocky shapes to kind of just indicate what things are. And that's what I did with the bed. Um, and then obviously I needed to have some form of window slash sliding doors. I really wanted sliding doors. That's what I really needed. So I used the Archimesh slash Archipack plugin again to create that. I didn't need to go through full detail with that door as well. Um, I mean, you could see that you could barely tell what it is in the final illustration because it's covered by a curtain. But it was still fun to mess around with it. And that's why I, that's why I did what I did. And then after setting up the room, after setting up all the extra stuff that I wanted in the room, I set out um, these this grid-like patterns. I basically created a plane and then turned on the wireframe, um, not plug-in, but... Uh, oh, man, I'm missing my term. Uh, it's one of the object edit function what is that word in blender man oh now i have to open up blender just to figure out what this word i'm looking for man it always happens to me i always blank out with, with terminology terms anyways so i created a plane and with that plane i turn on a modifier an object modifier i turn on an object modifier called wireframe which basically turns that object into wireframe mode and the reason why i do, I do this is because i basically kind of just wanted perspective lines in my scene and that's what those things are for so obviously i set one for the ground set one for the ceiling and set one for the far wall just so that I could get a good idea of perspective lines and whatnot. And I eventually will end up using this in Creator um, to draw my scene out. So, but after I'm done setting up the whole thing, I'm obviously rendering, which I didn't even really need to record this thing because this is a very tedious and long process. But after um, rendering this scene, I basically will import this into Creator. And then as soon as I import this into Krita, I will do a very quick sketch, not not a really super detailed sketch. Here we are in Krita. <laughs> there we are. Um, so I import the scene and slowly I would do a real quick sketch. Um, as soon as I do my quick sketch, I create another layer where I put just a bunch of colors. Um, the colors are... If I'm not wrong, I'm using palette, cinema palettes, or cinema palettes palette, basically, for this illustration. I got in a habit of using their very limited color palette just to kind of help me get things started. Um, so yeah, after I do my quick sketch, I create another layer, and in this layer, I do, I just lay down some colors based on a color palette cinema. Um, they're quick. Um, I don't spend a whole lot of time on it. I don't think too much about what where really the colors are. What I do concentrate on, concentrate on in this particular part is the values. Um, I learned that a long time ago from Marco Bucci. Um, values are, play such an important role compared to colors that it don't even matter what colors you put in uh, so long as your values are good uh, your composition will end up being fine. 
So, and of course, there's color harmony that, and color theory that still plays into factor, uh, uh, plays a factor in creating good compositions. But I would say value is definitely far more important than than what you lay down color wise. Um, so really, that's what I concentrate on. I concentrate on my shadows and I concentrate on my light. Um, at this phase of my art. Um, I was still experimenting with things and I know that I have a bad tendency to wash things out because all my whites just get too bright. So I'm trying to downplay that part of my art process now, trying to tweak that process, not downplay, but trying to tweak that process to where I don't get too white washed out scenes. Um, so yeah. And real quick before I forget, there's this photo by Caroline Grabowski. I mean, it's mentioned on the title of the photo. I'm using a photo by Caroline Grabowski, such an awesome photo that I got from Pixels. Um, Pixels.com is a great site, resource site for artists to use. Um, they offer free photos for artists to use, basically uh, royalty free and whatnot and license free. So uh, majority of them are public domain. So. It's really cool. I mean, it's just a great reference site to use, basically. So, anyways, um, I am basically using this photo to uh, help me sketch out Fairy Dog. Basically, Fairy Dog was one of the speed paints that I did last summer. I posted it last summer. Um, I think the title of the piece was called Summer Fairy, and it's basically a dog with wings is what I drew. And for some odd reason, I was inspired to bring him back for this particular ins for this particular illustration, um, which I could talk some more about this illustration and the genesis of this illustration in a little bit. But yeah, that's why I have the photo. I'm using that photo to help me quickly sketch out the dog, and of course, I have to bring back the butterfly wings because that's what made summer fairy or fairy dog or i think i call it summer fairy um very iconic um so yeah uh and then as soon as i sketched it out i merged all my sketch layers and again i did the quick coloring thing with the values and then as soon as i have all the coloring and all the sketching done i Merge them all into one layer, smudge things around into recognizable shapes. That's obviously the most important part is that all the shapes need to be recognizable. And then as soon as they're all smudged out, I basically end up s with this base paint is what I've been calling it. Uh, it's basically the base layer of all my detailing. So the base layer will have all the important information such, such as color, composition, lighting, values, perspective, all that stuff, except it's super messy. And I basically just need to go over the base paint and just kind of fix things up. So that's what you'll see me do in the next few minutes. Um, so yeah, I will just watch the show for now, enjoy the show, and then I'll come back uh, a later in this video to talk some more about this particular, particular illustration. So yeah, enjoy the show.
Okay, obviously I have started my detailing process. I obviously started working from the background and slowly working my way to the foreground. Uh, my detailing process is pretty much a three-step process. It pretty much goes throughout parts of the illustration. I basically delineate my edges, which means I make my edges sharper and get rid of all the black line from the sketches. I do this so that the shapes would read better and I accentuate shadows which means if the shadows need a little bit more of darkening I darken it up a little bit and then I obviously add highlights so I basically just do this throughout parts of the image over and over again uh, again like I mentioned I started with the back and then slowly working my way to the foreground uh, one of the things that I added on to this illustration is this um, collaborative artwork that I was part of in this discord channel that I'm part of it's called ramen's sketch zone well actually we're just sketch zone but since there's quite a few sketch zone, uh, sketch zone groups out there 
I totally differentiate my sketch zone group by referring to it as ramen's sketch zone because he is the founder of ramen um so yeah he started a group and whatnot and then part of it is a really great group uh, we do a lot of art activities in that group and so one of the art activities is a uh, collaborative artwork <laughs> which is what is being displayed on that canvas in the back wall uh, such a cool piece of artwork personally um so yeah um that's one thing that i added um and then the other thing that i wanted to mention is obviously where the idea came from for this particular illustration um so this illustration got its start from a daily spit paint prompt called tentacles in that particular speed paint that i did slash speed sketch really it was a sketch not a speed paint uh, i was doing it on my sketchbook um, the sketch that I did was basically the same exact scene that we're looking at right now. It's a room with the sliding doors casting some form of light onto the room. And instead of the person on the bed and the summer fairy dog in the scene, I drew tentacles because the prompt for that day was tentacles. Or one of the prompts for that day was tentacles. Um... And so originally when I was going to develop that scene, I was originally going to do something with tentacles, but at the very last minute I decided, you know what, the tentacles is kind of sort of creepy uh, vibe to it. And it's not that I'm opposed to doing anything creepy. I've done creepy illustrations before, but when I decided to develop this piece, I just felt different like I didn't want to do I didn't feel like doing something creepy I wanted something campy something cheesy and so I'm not sure what inspired me to bring back summer fairy dog from you know from an earlier illustration but something did inspire me to bring it back and so I did I thought it would make a cool composition in which it is a call a cool composition and so yeah, I brought back Summer Fairy Dog into this illustration and just kind of added him on there together with another figure. And lo and behold, we have this illustration called Lazy Sunday. You know, it looks like just any other normal Sunday where instead of us cleaning, we just wanted to lunch around and play video games, which is probably what that person is doing on the bed. Now, obviously, he's on the bed and it looks like he's lounging. And yeah, he's probably playing some video games. We see a bunch of game controllers laid out on the ground. So yeah, it kind of indicates it's one of those days where nothing happens. And his pet fairy dog with his fairy wings is just hanging out, just checking the scene out and whatnot. So yeah, it's a cheesy scene. It's a campy scene. It's, uh, yeah, nothing too deep about the illustration aside from its simple cheesiness really a more after the composition of it you know just this whole vibe that it's a lazy sunday and nothing's going on you know it's just a guy with his pet just chilling just hanging out so yeah pretty much like a fun illustration so but yeah, this illustration is almost done because this is pretty much a speed paint and I knew that I wanted to keep this as a speed paint. So it was done fairly fast, less than five hours, obviously. I always limit all my speed paints under five hours. And it's one of the rules that I have that I've stuck closely with. Um, I could, of course, develop it some more because I do have some longer pieces, but I really do limit those to a few. So yeah. But yeah, um... I guess I could talk real quick about my opinions of this piece. I think this piece is could be better <laughs> now that I'm looking at it uh, after not having seen it for quite some time. Looking at it now, I feel like there's a few things that I could have done in that speed paint um, that could have made things better. Um, I could have taken out the lamp. The lamp is causing such a tangent issue in between the wings that... I personally feel like that should have just been taken out. And the other thing that I wanted to point out was the curtains. Uh, curtains, even sheer ones or 
practically see-through curtains still cast shadows and I realized I didn't draw shadows on the ground so that is one crucial little detail that's sort of missing and I wish I had put on there um, I feel like the dog could be moved a little bit you know so that it's a little more center I, I wanted to keep him off center but I feel like he's too far left. Like I feel like there's too many things going on in the left. So maybe I could have swished him around or or whatnot. Um, but yeah, his positioning is slightly off uh, and whatnot. I know I wanted to cut off the guy. Uh, I wanted to kind of leave him just barely there. Uh, so yeah. But composition wise, it's cool. Uh, there are a lot more things that could be done better, but lo and behold, um, I kept it as is because it is a speed paint and whatnot. So I wanted to keep it loose and sketchy. General, generally have that feeling in the piece. So yeah, but yeah, this piece is almost done. It's practically done. If I'm not wrong, I think this is it. This is practically the ending of it. So yeah. There it is. Thank you guys so much for watching it with me. I hope you guys learned a thing or two from it. Um, and we'll catch you guys in the next video. Like and subscribe. Good night.